Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're back again. That's right. The MCU Future Series is back. We took a minute. We went across the street, hang out with the kids next door over there at the DCU. We had some fun. We talked about it. So we say, okay, we got to go. It's nice. You know when you go across the street from your friend's backyard. That's right. This is Tracy at Spivey 4994. And with me once again, Akehead News and Nerd Generation. I'm bringing in, that's right, Pablo. Say twice a lot. Pete, what's going on? Hey, man, what's going on, man? A lot of news, a lot of news. Disappointing news, possibly. Possibly. Well, well, wow. Disappointing? Regrets? I've had a few. I don't mean, I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, before we start off once again, tell everybody, uh, just hold tight. I think we can beat this thing. Numbers went down. Currently, we can get through this. Like I said, my money's on us. And before we even get into it, do the right thing. Hit that subscribe button. And see the little bell? You can even do that too if you want to. Ding, 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 ding. You know, like, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back to the MCU Future Series. And today's topic, hey, the biggest uh, newsmaker this week, by the time you hear this podcast, it might still be making news. I, I, I don't know. You know how uh, the winds change around here. But ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about Daredevil. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It's now 2020. We all know where we are and where we're at. And I guess the one thing to talk about as far as Daredevil is the past, present, and future. The past was mixed with a little bit of um, controversy. And I'll, I'll tell you why right now. Because we're going to shoot, the, right, we're gonna shoot you're back talking, to this You're talking about Netflix? Talking about Daredevil in general as far as hitting the uh, media platforms. Okay. Daredevil's basically seen over the decades. You saw him in, um, I think you saw him in Spidey and His Amazing Friends. I think. I got to look back at that. Boy, I sure love watching those old YouTube uh, yeah. Saturday morning. Yeah, that, Spidey and Amazing I love that show. I think it's on Disney Plus now. But um, yeah. Daredevil made his TV appearance, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Back in The Incredible Hulk. Remember that? His, whole, his suit was all black. Yeah, The Incredible Hulk. On The Hulk. Incredible Hulk. That's Daredevil. right. Daredevil. Daredevil. Yes, he was Daredevil. Yes, Matt yes, Murdoch yes, was his yes. lord. But I, I they think did, it was they... called The Trial of the Incredible Hulk. Oh, wow. That's right. Hey, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. I um I remember that as a kid running home. See that episode? Thinking we'd get a real Daredevil. But uh, back in those days, we got piecemeal. Whatever we got, we had to accept it. That was just it. They had Daredevil in black. He could have been a Black Panther. But anyway, let's jump forward. The mobile <laughs> Netflix deal broke out. And the first series they put on was Daredevil. And a quick behind the scenes, the reason why Mobile even had Daredevil is because back in the day, now check this out, I'm sure the real heads know this. Back in the day, Fox owned the rights to Daredevil after the Ben Affleck thing. The rights slipped back to Marvel. Marvel wanted the rights back to the Silver Surfer and Galactus. Fox said no. And let the Daredevil rights go. And then there was going to be a reboot with Fox of Daredevil that was going to be 1970 centric. And they said it was kind of, they said it was going to be dope. Okay. They said it was going to be dope. It was going to be 1970 centric, but it didn't jump off. It didn't pan out. Yeah. So Marvel got the rights back. And then, of course, Marvel started their whole Netflix deal with Daredevil. And little did we know or behold, that it would be one of the best shows on the air. Absolutely. Whether it was Absolutely. TV, cable, subscription, yeah. or Daredevil, that first season, it was a shocker. Because everybody kept thinking, and people, you, you tell me, everybody kept thinking, oh, it has to be 1970s centric. In my opinion, you put an emphasis too much on the backdrop and instead of who the character was. I think any character can be done in modern day. I don't think yeah. you have to put them in 1941 yeah. or World War II. You don't have that's to the, do that. That's what, they do in the, that's what they do in the comics. Yeah, but like we said, in representation in media, yeah. you don't have to put Cap in 1941. Listen, we could have yeah. Cap back then and had a million stories to tell. But you, yeah. have, to, you have to bring him in. You know what I'm saying? It's modern media. You have to bring him in. All right, so they brought that devil in, and the thing took us all by surprise. We fell in love with Charlie Cox. I would have never picked him as Daredevil. Nah. I didn't even know who the guy was. I knew he was from, uh, the first time I saw him was on Boardwalk Empire. Yeah, that's what everybody talks about. That's that's yeah. the, that's his claim. Yeah. That's who his claim to fame, yeah, yeah. Boardwalk Empire. Boardwalk Empire. We all know who, um, who? Uh, Rosario. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I, was at a, I was at a birthday party for her. It was, listen. It was it was cool, real cool. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, the the cast for Daredevil, it was, although surprising for some parts, but not surprising for others. It was a great performance by everyone, I think. You know? I mean, you 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 couldn't have told me I would have cared about um, Karen. Because yeah. in the books, they did if you don't know the story, Karen turned out to be a drug addict, and it, it just goes, yeah. then they have to like this. It it just never was. She she was just always a a a, a Daria. She was always yeah. a downer. It just yeah. never it never <laughs> and then Foggy Yeah. Foggy Foggy turned out to be that was the best interpretation yes. for Foggy Nelson, yes. I think you could find ladies yeah. and gentlemen, he Foggy's Foggy. That yeah. kid that plays Foggy is exactly how Foggy's supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. They hit yeah. that one right on the My nail. Nose. But once again, the kingpin stole a series. What? That man is a genius. And you only because, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen, you gotta understand. You have to take once again. Uh, you have to make a human being that basically in the comic books he's superhuman. He's mm -hmm. he's big as the Hulk. I mean, he's yeah, big he's as. Huge. I mean, people don't. Yeah, people don't understand. You would almost say this guy's got to be a mutant or something. No. <laughs> The way he portrayed it, his presence was huge. Yeah. His presence was huge. He didn't, he was already a big guy. And, but he played it. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. That one that when he catches fire, it is over for you. Yo, when he said quiet in a prison and dude shut up, that says it all right there. His assistant. Oh man, he loved that guy. That was terrible, but he was a scumbag too. Oh, 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 oh. The, the, uh, in, in the first uh, Wesley. scene, right? Wesley. Yes, 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 yes. Wesley. Yes. And the last time I saw, and next time I saw Wesley after that, John Wick was uh, shoving his face into the sink. Yeah, he's in billions as well. I said, wait, I said, wait a minute, I know that guy. That guy's yeah. a daredevil. Yeah. They should have kept him around. That's a that's a regret. Yeah, they should have yeah, kept Wesley. Yeah, because he, he, he was a and, very because uh, everybody likes a loyal person, <laughs> right? Yeah, and yeah, he yeah. was that guy. He, he was Alfred. Yeah, he was Alfred to the Joker. Yes, yes. Everybody liked Wesley, mm -hmm. but he, but 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 no matter what, these are very well refined gentlemen. Yes, they're uh, a man's man, as they say, <laughs> over in merry old England, a man's <laughs> man, but. The other character that got fleshed out was the uh, was the reporter. He was great. Who who who? The re the reporter, the black dude, right? The, the Ben, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I know the Ben Urich. Yes, the black dude. I'm mad they killed him off too. His man. character should have got an Emmy. Yeah. He was freaking awesome. Oh, yeah, I'm mad they killed him off too, man. Man, I met him. It's so funny when they, oh, he's another one. Oh, he put that one right next to Wesley. They shouldn't have killed off Ben Yurik. You characters like that, you have to yeah. keep. But then that makes me wonder, and not to not to drift. Did Netflix know something? You letting these characters get killed off Dice like off. that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Would Marvel have killed him off? Oh no way. Nah, brother. That dude has a job for a minute. Oh, he's got a job, and then he's going to cross pollinate. Mm -hmm. I gotta put him in some other stories. Mm -hmm. He was, he was, he was awesome. He definitely could have been that thread. Yeah, you should have kept Wesley, and you should have kept Ben Yuri. Listen, that was season one. The Russian brothers, I love the Russian brothers. That one brother, he tried to take care of the other brother. He said, "You killed my brother." He said, no, "I didn't kill your brother." <laughs> he said, "It wasn't me." Remember, they didn't know his name. Yeah. Yeah, remember that? Nobody knew his name. Fisk. Who? Fisk. And then it was Madame Gao. Ladies and gentlemen, in the comic books, Mr. Owsley was the owl. An obscure character. He was a, a D-lister. Uh, you, know, you know what comes after D. That's mostly all the Spider-Man characters and Daredevil's characters. they D-listers. Like, you know, like Stilt Man, the Jackal. Yeah. yeah. The, Jackal would, the Jackal would try to get upgraded to like a B-list, but that was later with the Spider-Man and the clones and all of that stuff yeah. they did in comics. And that pissed off everybody. A whole generation said, wait a minute. You mean the last 15 years that really wasn't Peter Parker? No. 
<laughs> man, you could, man, they were burning down comic book shops. It was crazy. <laughs> What the? I mean, it was, it was, wait a minute. You mean all those adventures and everything? That wasn't him? So wait a minute. The Spider-Man and Contest of Champions, was that Peter Parker? No, that was the other guy, Ben Riley. What? Wow, yeah. I remember that. That was, I, that, that, it was newsworthy. Dude, that rocked the comic industry. Yeah. The community was law. They could not believe. But you see, but you see, Marvel got rid of that real quick. They know what's up. Now let's get back to Daredevil, boys and girls. That was that was a momentary drift. Did you like the fact that they took the Gladiator, another D-lister, mm -hmm. that would have um, buzz saws on his wrist? Yeah. That was before Wolverine. And ladies and gentlemen, his costume was blue and yellow before Wolverine came out in that 1974 X-Men combo. But all you gotta do is uh, go to the archives, boys and girls. Check the library. Y'all y'all see it. But the Gladiator was there. He was a Daredevil and Allah Spider-Man villain, you know, Daredevil yeah. and Spidey shared guys. Yeah, Even yeah. Stilt Man. That was funny. But yeah. um, they made him the uh, weaponer. He was yeah. the one who designed the suits. Did yeah. you appreciate the fact that Daredevil didn't get his costume until the, the end of the series? Did you appreciate that? I definitely did because... You got to, we got so much of the costumey stuff in uh, Avengers and all those. The way they started off, and you can see why he needed something like this, why he needed to evolve okay. because of what he found out. You know, this guy was making these outfits that protect these dudes. I'm getting hurt out here. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. He, he, went to him. Him. he went out there in a leotard and <laughs> wraps, wraps a rope around his hands. It's crazy. <laughs> getting shot at stabbed it reminds me of Batman what, year one once again sense. Frank Miller it, that's it that's why it makes sense that's what makes total sense and then of course ladies and gentlemen arguably the greatest introduction next to uh, Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin that's right ladies and gentlemen hmm. Hmm. we got the Punisher oh my goodness oh, we my got the goodness. Punisher ladies and gentlemen Man. From the Marvel Netflix deal, we got the Punisher. These are the things that get me upset when we get to that point. Because it makes you wonder, but go ahead. <laughs> we got the Punisher. We were introduced to Frank Castle. God, I love Frank. Frank, I love Frank. And I love his story that they told in the Netflix series. It was great. Yeah. Oh, my Frank God. Frank was Frank. And John Berenthal. Psst. I mean, here's a character that, you know, there's a couple other actors out there that we could use to probably portray Frank in a certain way. Mm -hmm. But uh, John came in straight from Walking Dead. Wow, this this this, this podcast is going to have a lot of a lot of flashbacks Jeez. and there's a lot of property going back and with it. But <laughs> but John came in straight from the Walking Dead and just completely. Ladies and gentlemen, the man walked in. They said, "We got to give you your own show." Listen. The most, the scene that I watch the most is when they're on the roof. Oh, and he's talking to him, and Matt's trying to save his soul. Yeah, okay, man. <laughs> it was amazing. Straight out of the comics, man. Straight out of the comics. There's something about, I can go back to Daredevil Season 1 and Season 2 right now, and, of course, The Punisher Season 1. There was something in the writing, the showrunner, I, I don't even know what to tell you. I hope these people got Emmys. We're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna look this up. That that was, I mean, that that was just great storytelling. Yeah. And the thing that was great about Frank, Frank said, "I don't care who Red is. I don't care." Yeah. I, and not for nothing, Frank likes Red. I like him. He thinks I'm better than what I am. And you, if you ask me, you keep watching those shows. I think Frank knows who uh, that Matt's there. Though. But but like Frank said, he don't care. Daredevil season three. Yeah. We have all this backdrop now. We had the first season, the second season. We have Frank's first season, Frank's second season. We had some characters that cross pollinated in all of, in both series. And yeah. of course, we also had the defenders and yeah. Luke Cage, not so much. Luke didn't, uh, no, not, no, no. But I'll, I, I, Daredevil can I say season this three. About, can I say something real quick about Luke Cage? I'm gonna be real concise. You you liked it, but it wasn't. You liked it. It was cool, but it wasn't. 
it didn't deliver on the like the like oh snap. At first you got a glimpse of that, but then as as it went along, you were sort of over it already. Season Both seasons. Uh I think I like more of the side characters than I did Luke Cage. Bushmaster. Oh yeah, Mustafa Cottonmouth. was great. Mustafa was great. Yeah. Mustafa was great. But we're just gonna put it out there. Um Daredevil season three, it should have won basically most um T V awards it should have been. Yeah. They're, they're, they're out there. He should have won some Emmys, some Golden Globes. The writing on season three was I, was, uh, I thought season one. And people talk about season two got away and slipped away from, well, season three put everything back on track. Oh, yeah. And beyond. Season three of Netflix Daredevil was just unbelievable. Amazing. 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 Everyone, everyone we know in this genre and also in media said it was incredible. Yes. Yes. And that last episode, when he... Pulping Kingpin after yeah. everything Kingpin did with those cops, those detectives, and with that one cop going going rogue, Man. bullseye, Man. the whole, I mean... Everyone. And look how it, it was, started out. Do they have awards for, like, best ensemble? Probably. But that Daredevil season three, hands down, was the best television we had seen, and I don't want to say 20 years, but if, if there's something in the last 20 years on the par with that Daredevil Season 3, please, you guys put that in the comments because yeah. that yeah. Season 3 was an unbelievable. Amazing. Amazing. And it's still focused on, and why, ladies and gentlemen, it was Kingpin-centric. Yes. He manipulated everything from the inside out. out. He actually got them to let him out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you remember in Dark Knight how the Joker was always two to three steps, not even in front of Batman. Remember how the way it was written? This guy, it, it was almost impossible. It's almost impossible. Nobody can't be this many steps ahead of everybody. That's crazy. <laughs> Remember the Dark Knight? I mean, this yeah. guy, it was, it was just unbelievable yeah. how he was able, the hospital, the, like, get, get come on. There's no, everything. everything, there's no coordination with that. He knew the bow to come on. Come on, the the bank job in the beginning. Come on, that's how the, that's how the kingpin was in Daredevil season three. It was to the point where this is impossible without mutual collaboration from all the departments. This is impossible. But yet the writers wrote it. They didn't make it crazy. They made it understandable. You're like, oh snap! You can see the connections. Guess, it wasn't out of nowhere. I guess that was the key. It made it understandable. Just like, with the, well, see, the Dark Knight didn't do that. You just didn't know. How was the Joker eight steps that, yo, know, what, what, what did he do in the Dark Knight? He wanted to get captured yeah. because he had that guy get arrested and put the bomb. Dude, you know how impossible it is yeah, to strategize I mean, I think, all of these things I think it going was more, at once. That's crazy. For me, for me, with the Joker, and I don't want to go too far, but for me, with Heath Ledger's Joker was more about the performance than the whole plans and all that other stuff. Even though it was it was done very well, and you'd be like, "Yo, how the hell did he plan this?" You know what I'm saying? But I think it was more of the performance that really people were impressed by that version of the Joker. What they say in the movie ain't nobody that good. <laughs> no, nah, nobody is. Daredevil season three. I know it it won't be nominated for an Oscar, but the writing on that season was just. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we recommend you go back and watch Daredevil Season 3. It's just the best TV in the last 20 years. <laughs> Period. It really it, was. It, yeah, it really was. This was on another level. This was on another level. 
You know when you just don't get up to go get something to eat or you don't go to the bathroom? You just nah. keep letting Netflix play it. And you, and you know what's good when you skip the intro? Oh, yeah. I don't need to see this. I need to get skip to Skip the it. intro. I don't need to see that. I'm in it. I'm in. I, I'm, I'm not going away. Word up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the present. And obviously, you know, there was a merger, excuse me, acquisition. Disney bought 20th Century Fox. And with it comes back all of the properties. And of course, the most popular ones are Fantastic Four and the X-Men or the X-Men and Fantastic Four, whatever you want to say. But there's also the New Mutants thrown in there and a couple other things. Okay. But then as we said on, uh, back on AK News, back about three years ago, the streaming wars would start soon. If they say some of the other programs, the ratings were bad and they let Jessica Jones go after two years and Iron Fist, the Iron Fist season two was actually better than Iron Fist season one, but maybe it was too late and they figured out it, it wasn't working. The Defenders yeah. were basically a fill-in. Yeah. That was a fill-in or whatever. But Daredevil and The Punisher were two of the best shows streaming. But Netflix wanted to make a move and separate to which is what they did. Yeah. Um, when all those shows started getting canceled, I thought every show would go except for Daredevil. No. And The Punisher. Nah, I thought I thought all of them were gone. I said, oh, something's going on. Something's going on. Yo, when they, yo, I think there was the release of Daredevil, the first episode on that Friday, they canceled Luke Cage. Wow. You, the writing was on the wall already. This this was it. And the guys who knew about it already, the guys for Daredevil, I'm pretty sure they knew. And they say, yo, let's 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 do something let's do something amazing. I mean, wow. Wow. So here we are in the present, and the present belongs the future. Um recently, as of I'm gonna say as of when we're taping this compared to when it will air. But Char Charlie Cox finally came out. Everybody knows he was on Broadway doing that um, show with Tom Hiddleston. Mm -hmm. He says right now, Marvel hasn't called him. And everybody went crazy. Charlie Cox is an actor. Charlie Cox does not run Disney. Charlie Cox does not run Marvel Studios. Charlie Cox does not have Kevin Feige report to him. That's all I'm saying for that right now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But the man didn't lie to you if he says he hasn't heard anything. Yeah. So I know over the last couple of days, people have jumped out the window. I, won I wonder, though. I wonder, though. I w you know, it makes you wonder what's <laughs> going on. Because if it, uh, you know. If it's something know, Marvel wants to keep secret. Listen, you never know what the stratagem is. Yeah. And, and Charlie Cox did not lie. And what Charlie Cox was doing, he's not telling you, oh, I'm not back. I'm not. Listen, if it was if it was me and you, I'm hiring the whole damn staff, even the guy that went out and got the donuts. <laughs> even the caterer, I'm hiring the same caterer. I want the same van and push come to shelf. I want the same water. I want the same water from 2000 and... 13 when y'all take this sucker. I want everything back. <laughs> now, now, which is funny, O.P., you don't hear John Barenthal saying, I haven't heard from Marvel. You haven't heard nothing from John Barenthal, right? Has he, been, has, he, has he been asked? And the question with Frank is, will he tell you? <laughs> nah, he won't. Nah, he won't. John, John looks John like the type won't. of dude yeah, that John he's a stand-up stand dude. That man was on The he Walking like Dead. That man dude. was on The Walking Dead. He ain't telling you nothing. Yeah. Because not only is John yeah. talking about a series on Disney+, Plus, he's getting... Listen, John's getting movies. The Punisher's yeah. getting movies. And The Punisher will be cross-pollinated in the MCU going forward. Of course. His version. Him. That Him. Him. And which is which is something that has to be mentioned because 
you know, we have the question mark or the possible no that this is not happening with Charlie Cox and they're looking to recast, then you have to wonder. Charlie Cox was great as yeah. Daredevil. John Bernthal was fantastic. Vincent but John, Canalfield? But John Bernthal was already approached. Kevin Feige already lauded him. He's the Punisher. Okay. So I don't understand why you want to... The, the, the chemistry was already there. Why you want to break that up? I think it's... I, th- I honestly think, man, Marvel's going to come to their senses if this is not the case. Yeah. You know? We just haven't talked to I think Charlie Marvel's Cox yet. That's all. Senses. We just haven't talked to him yet. Why, why, yeah. why wouldn't we... Are you kidding me? I'm, I'm bringing yeah. back Foggy. I'm bringing back Cameron. I'm going to resurrect Ben Urich. I'm going to resurrect <laughs> Wesley. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I don't know about that. You talk about know. Mandalorian's ratings. You put that Daredevil show on. Pete, it, it, it's a wrap. See who we got. Same everything. Oh, I'm in. How much Disney Plus? Oh, okay, I'm good. I'm in. And this will go in, ladies and gentlemen, with uh, AK News and Nerd Generation. Or Nerd Generation and AK News have been saying. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to break the news right here. Because we always like to uh, be pioneers in this whole game. In the hustle, baby. Um, Disney Plus is going to go through trial and error. Me and Mr. Sloan have already decided who's going to make it and who's not. <laughs> but when you got Daredevil Punisher as a backup on Disney Plus, it don't matter whether or not those things fail. I think you want to yeah. recoup some of your money into production that you're going to use mm-hmm. to make those shows. But ladies and gentlemen, we can say it right now. I've seen some of the titles, and we're going to do a show about that. I've seen some of the titles, and I already have my um, collectors picked, and my premonitions, and my tarot cards, and my crystal ball, and my jumping jacks, and my fingers crossed. But I already think I already know who's who's not going to be around. I mean, we said it in that, <laughs> I said it in the DC U uh, podcast. Uh, we're going to try to plan to sell Goofy. This year, let's see if people are going to buy Goofy. And mm-hmm. hey, no, hey, AP, let's see if people want to chime in to Goofy. The Mandalorian and Goofy. You set a tone over there at Disney+. Plus. The Mandalorian yeah. has but set I, a tone. It felt like back in the day where you, you knew it was coming out Friday. And on Friday when you got home, you were going to watch that show. You had that scheduled. Right now, this you can watch anything at any time, right? But when it came out Friday, you were there Friday for when it came out, whether it was midnight or eight o'clock when you got home after eating a meal. Amazing. It was crazy. I mean, Mandalorian season two is already greenlit and Mandalorian season three. You (laughs) let the world know you're putting Daredevil and the Punisher on Disney Plus. It's a wrap. Yeah, but I don't think... I don't think they'll put Punisher on Disney Plus. I don't think they should put Daredevil on Disney Plus. And why is they that? They should move him over to Hulu because of the content. That is not a family friendly show. Punisher is not a family friendly show. That is a serious show, adult show. So you're saying Disney Plus doesn't want to try to grow up? Disney should put him on Hulu. They'll still be a part of the MCU, but on a different. You know, in, on a different uh, uh, service that that's supposed to be the adult oriented type shows. So you think I, all I those shows scheduled, all those shows scheduled for Disney Plus, um, will well, be? I don't hate to use this term, watered down. It's yeah. not. It's not gritty. It's not gritty. Uh huh. It falls under the more James Bond type. Yeah. Okay. Feel to it, you know. You could take your kid to see James Bond. Some of it, you know, some. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's some not as brutal as Daredevil and Punisher. What a predicament! But here we are. But I'll have to say this, Trey. That initially, when Spider-Man to Home, uh, Far From Home ended with the uh, Mysterio revealing who Spidey was. People already started speculating, speculating as to what type of story the next film will Correct. be, and Correct. that he might need a lawyer, whatever the case Correct. may be. So obviously, the it was it was just 
um, it was obvious to everyone who the lawyer should be if you have these characters, right? If you're going to have these characters just in, in time for this this movie, it would be perfect. And it's just it in time for amazing. the acquisition. Just in time when the acquisition yes. hits. Hey, now I got these characters yes. back. That's, 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 that's a free throw, man. That's a layup. That's a layup. Charlie Cox chose to come out right now. Maybe he just got tired of people asking him, hey, 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 hey. He's like, what, 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 yeah, what? Yeah, it could <laughs> be know? that. It could be that because I'm, I'm, I'm certain. Listen, if I saw Charlie Cox in the street, I stop him. I don't stop stars. I've seen a bunch of stars in the streets. I don't stop. I saw Denzel. I'm like, oh, snap, Denzel. But I don't. St- he's done amazing work. But in terms of approachable and 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 and, and enjoying the performance that he had, I would to a character that we love from the comics. You got to give it up. You got to say, yo, I loved you in that in, in, in Daredevil, man. You did an amazing job. You got to yeah. say it. And I said, I hope you gave the writers a, a watch, just like they do in the NFL. <laughs> and, 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 and because he, and, yeah, and because he's not a huge star, I'm pretty sure he's approachable and he, he's not being mobbed. And I'm pretty sure people are asking these questions. I'm just not going to jump out the window. And if we find out that uh, Kevin Feige calls Charlie Cox two weeks from now, not shocked. Would you be shocked? I'm not no. going to be shocked. No. And then I think everybody jumped, no. everybody jumped in the gun. It's too early. You we know, don't even still, know what the story is. We're, everybody's speculating about it. We, yeah, I mean, take it easy. Everybody's, everybody's up in the gun. Everybody jumped out the window. Yeah. Interesting times they were in. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with more of the MCU Future Series. This one has been Daredevil. The man without fear. And right now, the man without a home. <laughs> we, we don't know where he's going to be. But but the truth be told, is that we know Daredevil will be somewhere. It's too good a character. He has too much momentum. It, yeah. I, I just can't see people be, making bad... I can't see them making bad business moves now. The last time they made a bad business move, they called it Iron Man 3. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> that was personal. <laughs> we we can't have a Mandarin. People might find that offensive. Really, really. <laughs> oh, they oh can't be God. a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, twenty twenty came and all that has now changed. Yeah, we don't want to offend. All that has now changed. But that was just a joke on the side. Like, Shang Chi. Everybody, we getting the Matrix meets Into the Dragon. That's all I got to say. And they bring it back the Matrix people. They bring it back the John Wick. It's just everything's ridiculous. The Matrix is bringing the John Wick people people in, and the John Wick people are going over the same time. It's just gonna be crazy. Can I ask you a question? Are you about to ask me about that Transformers uh, prequel animation? No, movie? no, 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 no. You no. see, I plugged that in, right, boys and girls. Or how hurt would you feel if that movie sucked? Transformers uh, prequel anime. <laughs> nah. No, Shane Chan. Oh, no. Oh, no. Man, if that movie ain't dope, I'm burning something down. Something got to go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will be back with some more MCU future series. This is Nerd Generation with AK News. We're having fun. We're so glad you guys are chiming in to all these series, these collaborations. They're just great. And it's just fun talking about the topics that you guys like to talk about and the topics that make the news. So before we go, like we said, click on that subscribe button. Keep the comments coming. I love the comments. I love the verbatim. And uh, P, any last words? No, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's listening, man, and they're showing the support. And, you know, we really love doing this, and I hope you like listening. And uh, let's just stay safe and continue doing this. All right. All right, kids of all ages. We'll see you soon.